Welcome to the caravan place. Today we're looking at the Bailey Orion 434 and we're going to do the handover and show you how everything works on this particular model. So we've, uh, we've come to size and we're going to get ready to set the caravan up, run you through how everything works, how where everything goes. We're going to start with the, the gas. Again we're going to make sure that everything has been turned off inside and it's all in the in the off position so you've got nothing that's going to uh, light up or start. So uh, we've got room for a six kilogram bottle that's in the back at the moment and there is also room for a 3.9 kilogram. Uh, we've got it set up on propane so again the little pigtail here with the screw connector will be on the van it's then remembering that that's a reverse thread and a little spanner to, to tighten that up so uh, that's opposite to what you'd normally do uh, to tighten and loosen so to tighten it you, you loosen it in a conventional way and uh, again to take it off you've got to tighten it in, uh, in standard terms we've then got our battery box with our 230 hookup connection um, got the little cutout so the lead just folds through so when we're on site we can lock that up just underneath of that we've got the on and off switch for the motor mover so there's a little key switch that's on the keys that that will turn the, the motor mover on and off so again that must be put on first before the uh, the motor mover will work we've then got our batch compartment this will take up to about 115 120 amp leisure battery all, all pretty much all the leisure batteries will will fit into there so uh, and again it's just blue is negative and red is positive there's a little battery strap strap there to go around the battery just to secure that into place also the little tray it is better to use that so that uh, if any any drips off the the battery um, any battery acid or anything it's just going to go into the, the tray and not cause any damage with anything else we've then got a little storage locker so straight underneath of the bed so uh, if you need to put anything in out of there you can access the bed from inside also but that again is a nice nice little locker do you have to just remember on these lockers it is a good push in when you come to lock them so uh, and again you've got the key there just turns and locks in Moving to the other side, we've then got the cassette toilet. So again, to actually use the cassette toilet or to empty the cassette toilet, I'm not going to show you how to use it just yet. And that's actually, oh no it's not. Do you just have to be careful sometimes that if, it's, if the cassette isn't coming out uh, nice and easily, there's a chance that inside that the little trap is in the open position and what that basically means is this little guide here uh, it will stop the cassette coming out that has to be fully closed inside on the on the little trap this will then be in line as it is now and that will come out so always just make sure that if the cassette isn't coming out that inside that the little trap is is closed off um, and you can't let anything through this will then slide out nice and easily to actually empty the cassette screw cap comes off the end and then we've got a little air valve at the back so we hold that and that will then empty out into the Elson points on on site it has got little wheels and a little handle as well so uh, when you're taking the, the waste water container you can just take that across with you also and again it just drops back into place and slides back in top one we've got our uh, flush water so again this just opens up little watering can is probably your best bet tip your water into there you can put the pink chemical pink chemical that goes into the top blue into the bottom so pop a bit of uh, pink chemical in there there isn't any gauge to tell you when that's full it's literally when your feet get wet it's full uh, again I wouldn't advise traveling with that full 
because it is going to end up then sloshing around in that and possibly coming out inside in, into the caravan so I'd fill that up when you actually get on site it's okay to travel with it less than half or a quarter full something like that but the problem is it's difficult to gauge when that is actually half full, full or empty so uh, I would say make sure it's as empty as possible when you're traveling during the winter to drain the flush water off we've got a little bung here that's just tucked up into the top that literally just pops out there's a little bung in the in the end we undo the bung and that will drain that water out what you do want to make sure is that if you just leave it it's going to end up putting water into here so you are going to have to hold it while it drains off the other thing is stand back because as soon as you release that if you've got it pointing at yourself you're going to get soaked uh, it is it is the clean water um, but it's still not very nice and again just to catch the little dregs if you want to uh, just fully fully drain it off little margarine tip, tub uh, and that will then catch any of the little dregs at the end again that just pops in and again to shut that is just a good uh, just a good push forwards we then move on to the sides where we've got two waste water outputs so all of your waste water from your shower your kitchen uh, sink the bathroom sink it's all going to come straight out of there we've then got our there is also the flue um, for the heating system so again this one here is the is the flue so don't be thinking that that's the the waste water they do look completely different uh, don't need to do anything with that it is just literally a, a flue the only thing that I would say is just make sure that you don't cover that up if you're going to be using the boiler on gas we've then got our water connection so the water pump which will be in the sink of the caravan when you get this um, this will be in, in the sink we then drop this into the acrol first and the reason that we drop it into the acrol first is just to prime the pipe as much as possible it then literally just pushes in and lid pulls down to lock it into place sometimes after the winter it is worth just putting a little bit of Vaseline just on the end there um, and that will just make it a little bit easier it'll keep the seals nice and supple and you're not going to uh, dry anything out and damage any of the seals so if you find that that's difficult to push in at any point just a tiny little bit of Vaseline and again as I say the lip will just fold down and that will hold the the water pump into position got the water uh, the, the water heater flue cover and again during the winter um, you can pop this on again if you're going to use the the hot water on gas this has got to be taken off it's not going to get the correct airflow in to light up on the gas it it can light up on the gas uh, even with the cover on the problem is you're going to have a sonic boom and this is going to go flying across the the campsite and you're going to wonder what the hell has just happened so just make sure that that is off um, when you're going to use it so again really just mainly through the winter if you're not going to use it for a while it'll just stop spiders crawling into there and blocking up the the actual burner in there so that's uh, definitely worth taking that off we then move around to the the front now this again most of the vans sort of 2010 on are going to be set up with 13 pin electric so if you've got an older caravan um, or your car is set up for seven pin electrics make sure that you've got the 13 pin connector or an adapter otherwise you're going to turn up and we're not going to be able to get your lights working on your car and it's going to be a bit of a wasted journey so this will need if you've got seven pin connectors on the car you'll need a female 13 to two male seven pins they do also do a single converter which converts from the 13 to a single seven pin uh, which will just operate your lights so again important that you've got an adapter or you've got the 13 pin on the car uh, got the handbrake so again when you're not uh, when you're going to park up pop the handbrake on and then we can take it off of the car the one thing that I'd say is if you're going to leave it for any period of time probably actually chop the wheels put some 
uh, little chocks at the front and the back of the wheels and you can leave the handbrake off then that just stops the brake sticking on at any point. Alco AKS hitch head, uh, when you come to collect the van we will actually run through this and just make sure that you're happy uh, and you know exactly what you're doing when we, when we hitch this up so we will run through that properly. We have got another video as well um, that just goes into a little bit more detail on, on this. We've then got the breakaway cable again that's an important one that we've got to make sure that as we're hitching up breakaway cable is on there and connected uh, and that will just if it if it were to ever come detached from the car breakaway cable will pull the handbrake on and stop the caravan where it is and then we've got our jockey wheel which will raise the caravan we can use that for getting the caravan fairly level and also to raise it and drop it onto the uh, onto the tow ball of the car We'll now move inside. So we've moved onto the inside of the caravan now and we've got the main control panel. Now we've got our master 12 volt on and off so this will put our main power from the battery into the caravan. Um, because we've got the caravan battery and the 230 volt plugged in we'll see that we're just under 13 and a half volts so that will tell us that the actual charger unit is working. Um, this will also, when you've not got the 240 or 230 volt plugged in, it will give you a reading just straight off the battery. And as long as your battery is okay, it's going to be between 12, 12 and a half volts is where we want to see that. And again, that's a quick check just to make sure that the charger on the caravan is working okay, that we're then up to sort of just under 13 and a half volts. We've then got our lights on and off, so this will control all of our main lights on and off. So again, if if you've got all the lights on in the caravan and you're going out for an evening meal or just an evening walk you can just pop this one off and it will turn off 90% of the lights in the caravan so then when you come back in flick that one on and your lights will come on save having to put individual lights on throughout. We've then got our awning light on and off switch uh, and our water pump on and off. Now water pump we want to leave that off just for a little bit uh, we want to make sure that our drain bung on the water heater is closed down and we also want to make sure that all the taps are in the closed position. If we go and put the water pump on now and our drain bung on the water boiler is open which I'll show you now. So we've got a little yellow valve which is really through the winter this is what we're going to use to, to drain the water system down and then to fill the water system back up we want it flat horizontal as it is now uh, and then vertical in the upright position to drain it off so we need to make sure that that's down um, and that is then going to let us refill the system and then we want to make sure that all of our taps are in the off position so we're not going to put the water system on and just be bellowing water straight out um, so we want to make sure that we've done that before we put the water pump on um, before i do that i'm just going to run the run the gas system through um, and i'll do that and then we'll come back to the the water pump so onto the gas system the we've made sure that the gas bottle is connected we've made sure that the gas bottle is turned on on the actual gas bottle itself and that should then give us gas into the caravan and it's literally then on the control dials hold it in and turn it round and you should hear the gas start to come out so give it a few seconds and then on the oven itself we've got the igniter button we can hit that and then we should get the gas through the system there we go again when we've reconnected a gas bottle up for the first time or we've had it disconnected over the winter it is going to take a little bit of time to draw the gas through uh, the reason for that is all the pipes are going to be empty of gas um, and we're going to have to draw the gas from the bottle through to the appliance now we like to start at the hob reason for that is we can actually physically see that we've got the gas there um, this will just draw the gas through the system and it will make everything else an awful lot easier to, to light up then. So our fridge on gas is going to light up quicker, our oven on gas is going to light up quicker, and our boiler on gas, our heating is going to light up quicker also. Uh, these have all got flame failure devices on, so if they were to blow out in the wind, it's just going to cut the gas off after about 30 seconds, and we'll hear those click. There's one, two, 
and three. So that clicking noise is the gas flame failure device telling us basically that we've shut the gas off. So unless you were to actually turn the gas back on and ignite it now, it wouldn't light up. We've then got our oven, which this is a dual oven. So it does the grill and the oven all in one. So we've got one side for the grill, which is the top section here. And then we've got the other side for the oven over here. So if we want to use the um, grill, I've got a feeling, let me turn it to that side. And that will light up. We can then control that and turn that higher and lower. We can turn it off even. So you can control that up and down also on the control dial. And then for the oven, it's just the other side. And again, exactly the same. We just hold that in and that will light the oven up then. I don't know whether you can see that with the grill pan in the way. And again, these are thermostatically controlled. So whereas on the older ovens, you'd turn the gas control dial up and down and it would change the flame. It's all thermostatically controlled now. So when the oven door's closed up, um, that will get up to temperature and then the flame will die down. So if you, are changing the dial around and you don't see anything happening that's completely normal it is it is what's supposed to be happening um, as i said by starting with the hob first and getting the gas through the system it just means that we're not going to spend as long then trying to light up the fridge on gas trying to hit, hit light the heating system up on gas everything is just going to run a little bit quicker um, so if we light the fridge up on gas now so we pop it over to the, the gas symbol on our control dial here. We've then got our thermostat on here, and this is going to th work the thermostat either on gas or electric or on the car as we're traveling. And then we've got our igniter button here. So to light up on the gas, we pop it onto the gas symbol. We hold the thermostat in. I like to normally put it on the highest setting, and then we hit the igniter. And then what will happen Sometimes we can hear it light up, which you might not be able to, but the other indicator here, you'll see that the little red dial is actually moving up into the green section. And then as I release that, that should stay lit and it's not. See how we've come down so we've not we've not stayed lit, so I just need to hold it on the thermocoupler a little bit longer and then we've we've actually started now to go right up into the green so once we're up into the green we should be able to release that now and then that little dial there will actually stop up into the green section um, and that then is letting us know that that's lit and staying lit again if you release it too soon I've done it just on the black line just to sort of show you if you release it too soon that the flame will go back out so just make sure you hold it until we're right up into the green and then that will stay lit on the on the gas side of things. Uh, again the thermostat control dial then you can control that to, to where you want. If you've got it up too high you may find that your milk is starting to freeze so as you use it probably if you start off in a mid setting and then adjust it from there if you need it a little bit cooler just a little bit higher if it's getting a bit icy uh, just just come back off a little bit um, if we wanted to run the fridge on electric it's literally just onto the plug sign so we pop that over to the plug sign and that then again is exactly the same we're working on the thermostat and that's running on the the electric now the battery symbol it doesn't actually mean that it will run off of the battery on the caravan it is literally just saying that that's the 12 volt side for the fridge which if you've got the 13 pins connected on the on the car that should operate then from the the car as you're traveling a good bit of advice is probably if you if you can get the caravan at home 
have it on the drive run the fridge for a good four or five hours get it right down to temperature and then as you pop it onto the the car when you're traveling it won't freeze it down but it will it will pretty much hold the temperature of the fridge then when you're traveling for a good two three hour journey um, it it runs off the car um, off the alternator basically off the car battery side so it's not going to freeze down like it will do on the electric or the gas so if you just put it onto the car battery without getting it cold first it's just going to act like a cool box it's not going to freeze things down so uh, as i say just run it for a good few hours before you travel pop it onto the car and that will keep it then in the same state hopefully all the way through um, we can then move back onto our water system so we now know that we've got gas through the system we now know that we've changed we've turned all the taps off we have got the drain bung on the water heater in the down position so we're pretty confident now we can put the water pump switch on and we're not going to have water either coming out of all the taps everywhere or that it's just going to be emptying straight back outside so uh, we can then go to pull the water through the system we're going to start on the hot side and we're going to get coughing and spluttering for roughly four or five minutes uh, and the reason for that is the water heater is empty of water at the moment so we've got to refill that water system back up um, now that's an important thing to remember because if we go and put our water heater on either on gas or electric there's a chance that we're going to damage either the element on the electric or the actual container for the for the hot water system itself so we need to make sure that we've drawn the water through the system and we've got a constant flow of water as we now have here uh, we've cheated a little bit because the, the system was already half full in all fairness um, so we've got a little bit of coughing and spluttering if you're just coming to fill the caravan up after the winter it's going to cough and splutter for an awful lot longer than what we just saw um, and again we can then just run the cold side we'll do the same then on the bathroom and on the shower because it's on a, it works on a pressure system so we want to make sure that all of the taps are drawn through fully um, we've got the water through all of the pipe work and we've got no air left in the system otherwise you are going to have problems with the pump kicking in and out um, and causing a, a bit of a pressure pressure problem and um, so we can now once we've got all the water through the system on the hot and the cold system we know that that water tank is full we can now put the water heater on on 230 or on the gas now if we want to operate it on 230 first thing that we have to do is turn our little fuse trip switch on here so this is basically a fuse spur switch which has got a little fuse into the bottom so this has to be on before the electric side of the heating can work um, the actual dial now con to control the 230 side is on the bed box or on the bottom of the bed box on here so if we want the 230 on now on the lower setting we put it to the top to the low side and if we want the hot water on electric on a high setting we'll put it onto the bottom section now one reason that we might want it on high or low is depending on what the ampage of whatever site that you go on to so if it's a lower ampage site and you can't run as much on electric you may have to run this on the lower side and that will use less electric and it will allow you to use more things in the caravan on electric whereas if you've got it on the high setting you may find that you'll put the tv on and it'll blow the electrics if you've got the fridge on electric the water heater on electric and the heating on electric um, anything else then you you might find that you're going to blow the uh, the trip switch on the site so you may then have to run it on the lower setting or if it's a higher rampage site you'll be able to run it on the higher setting um, again make sure that we've got all the water through the system before we put this on either high or low otherwise we're going to do damage to the element um, for the hot water system if we want to use this on gas again we've got a high and a low setting then on the on the gas and it is literally just we put it straight on um, 
one thing again remember when we had the external cover that's got to be removed before we either put it on to high or low on gas otherwise it's going to have problems lighting um, so again on this one you can see that the low setting is 50 degrees the high setting is 70 degrees um, so you can then set that to, to where you want it to on the on the gas that will light up an awful lot quicker if you need to use it on the gas if we've drawn the gas through as we've just shown you by doing it on the hob um, individual light switches then for the the caravan so each light has got its own individual light switch on and um, the big switches or the big roof lights have got again their own little switches and again as i was saying earlier about if you were going out for the evening you can turn just the light switch off here and that will turn all the lights off in the caravan um, so again that's just a nice little feature if you're going out down the pub and uh, you save trying to find all the little switches afterwards once you've had a few drinks just one switch and that will put them put them all on um, onto the heating system so we have got the the blown air heating in this one which works on gas and electric it's the whale space heater um, and top dial is our thermostat so that's going to control what temperatures we we want it at and then our bottom dial we've got fan gas and then at the top here we've got 500 watts a thousand watts or two thousand watts and again one of the reasons that we may need to use different settings either 500 a thousand or two thousand as i was saying before if you go onto a site that's a low amperage site you may need to use it on the 500 watts along with uh, the lower settings on other electric items to actually use the heating on electric we first have got our fuse spur system so a little bit like on the water heater we have to put our fuse spur system on first and then if we're using it on the electric we can select then whether we want 500 a thousand or two thousand and then you'll hear as we turn that on you'll hear the boiler system kick in and that will then start putting the blown air through the through the system uh, again we can use the control dial then if I turn that right down it's quite cold today um, but you'll probably hear that quieten down in a second once we've, uh, once we've turned it down um, again then if we want to use it on gas we would then literally just put it straight onto our gas flame here and this will then after it's just gone through its little cycle that'll light up on the on the gas section the little vent on the outside by the waste water vents the little flue that we saw outside this is where that is going to go so when we run this heater on gas that's what you're going to see um, that that will put out a um, a slight heat and, and the exhaust basically of the gas once we've actually kicked in on the gas you'll see that the little light there comes on just to say that that's running on the on the gas side of things again we've got our thermostat then at the top and we can set that to what we want it to to a comfortable heat if we wanted just blown air around the van so if we're into the summer now and we're getting a little bit warm in the van and we just want to circulate a little bit of air we can put no heating on whatsoever and we can just use it as a blower and that's just going to blow the air in the caravan just circulate it round and just cool it down slightly so if you open the door put your fly screen across on the door um, and it's just going to circulate the air in the caravan then when we turn this into the off position the fan is going to run for around about 30 seconds to a minute uh, that's just clearing everything through on the on the heater itself so it's it's going to run for a good sort of 30 seconds 40 sec well 30 seconds to a minute before that kicks out and you'll hear the fan stop um, just above the controls there we've got a a 12 volt cigarette lighter uh, adapter so if you've got a tv that runs on 12 volts and it's got a more of a, a, a car charger type that plugs into the cigarette lighter you can run it into there we've got a tv aerial point that works off the status aerial that's fitted to the roof and then we've got a satellite point 
which on the outside will have a um, a little satellite connector basically that if you go onto a site and they've got satellite points you can wire straight into that you have got to run it either through a few free view box or a satellite box to uh, to actually watch those channels so onto aerials we've then got the status aerial in the front locker above the uh, the front seating we've got our booster box we've got a little blue light on there just to indicate that that is operational and working and once you've got your tv plugged in if you're having trouble getting a signal the directional aerial we can actually move this around and we can put it up and down and we can put this into a position that you want so we first release the unit we can then turn this all round and put it into whatever direction that we want we can then lock it back off with the little lock nut and then for fine adjustment we can then turn the aerial just for fine adjustments um, for traveling the there's a little red dot on the actual pole itself now this indicates the front of the antenna um, so the front part of the antenna um, is is now pointing to wherever our dot is so I believe I will just double check in a second that we want that facing the back so the front of the aerial now is fo facing the the back of the caravan and that is going to be the best way to to actually travel with the with the aerial so again just make sure that that red dot is facing the back we can then lock that back off and that now is back ready to travel and microwave so when you come to the caravan we will have put the microwave plate most likely under a cushion like this ready for traveling reason for that is if you're traveling along the door comes flying open this is going to come out and we're going to end up with a big dent in the worktop so make sure that when you're traveling the microwave plate has been taken out so i'll leave it just in at the moment because you've got to come in and fully clean everything back through so that's part of what he cleans through um, we've then got our different settings on the microwave um, and again we can then just set that to we can just either set it to the time we can set it to different settings again a little bit more in the in the handbook if you wanted to definitely use that one thing that i would say with the microwaves they they never fitted these with the right amount of air space around them so a minute maybe two minutes to heat things up you can get away with if you start trying to put a uh, jacket potato in there and you run, want to run it for five minutes you're going to probably do one jacket potato before the microwave explodes basically um, so it's fine for quick things a minute rice things like that beans if you're trying to do longer things jacket potatoes you're going to end up finding that the microwave goes bang uh, and stops working um, there's not enough air clearance around the microwaves to be able to take the amount of heat any more than a minute two minutes absolute tops and even two minutes you're pushing it um, there's just not enough ventilation around these microwaves to be able to take a, a, a longer cook uh, in there unfortunately so just make sure that if you are using the microwave um, it's it's not going to be run for, for any longer than um, two minutes absolute maximum um, you, you are going to end up sort of having a problem if, if you try and do that um, storage underneath of the bed we've we've fitted the, uh, the, the blind on on this one for the customer um, so again this just literally pulls across and works a, a nice little divider you've got the um, you've got the little blind as well that comes down um, the little Venetian blind and then you can adjust this as, as so as well it clips into the bottom sides with little clips again make sure that you've unclipped this before you try and move the blind up and down or you're going to end up damaging the the little clips on there and um, storage underneath of the bed again we've got the locker on the outside that comes in into here so we've got all the carpets in here the winding handles in here there is a caravan cover as well for the winter 
at the back there we can see the motor mover box there's nothing really to have to do anything with that just make sure that you don't put anything heavy on there to, to damage it otherwise it's uh, it's a great storage area and um, you've got the blown air pipes that run through there also and um, got the wardrobe on the side we've then got a, a little light switch just for the little light here the other switches have got their own individual switches on there and then in the bathroom we've got a, a pull cord that puts our lights on into the bathroom cassette toilet as we said to actually remove the cassette on the outside we need to make sure that the little trap door here is closed um, to open it we've got a little grey handle on the front that pushes towards the rear of the caravan so again once you've finished and you're going to empty the cassette and make this little grey handle is pulled right to the front the trap's closed and the cassette will come out nice and easily and um, to actually use the flush we've got the little blue button and that will just put the the water through we have emptied the flush water out of here now ready for traveling as i say um, it's it's not wise to travel with that full you will end up getting water coming coming out if it's completely full so just just bear that in mind our taps then for the bathroom again just just mix taps on and off um, it's wise to pull all the water through on the shower tap the sink tap and that's just going to get all the air through the system then also we've got a nice little cupboard underneath as well with more storage and again we've got the blind and there is enough room to pretty much completes our handover and walk through of the caravan um, hopefully we've covered everything that you're going to need to know if there is anything that we've missed out or you just need explaining a little bit better give us a call and um, we're here to help so uh, just let us know thank you for watching and uh, enjoy your new caravan